So we're continuing our series on the King's Speech, looking at the, the Sermon on the Mount. And we're particularly looking with Shirley today at verses um, 38 to 48 in Matthew chapter 5. And so we're going to pause for a moment while you read that together. So Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 to 48. So we have this really great passage, which throws a lot of really interesting stuff. So we've got this whole stuff about an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and it has been said before. So where does all that come from? Well, I thought I'd go back to the Old Testament and look at the commentaries to find out what actually was going on in those days when that law was made. And then I discovered this term, lex talionis. And it turns out it's an ancient law of retaliation or the law of revenge. Oh, okay. And it was from the Babylonian days, which was the 18th century BC, which okay. was in actual fact right at the beginning. It was way, way back. And it was brought about to improve the civilization the okay. behavior of the people. Because if someone committed a crime against you in those days, the result would have been pretty bloodthirsty and not great. So this was an effort to start off law-abiding citizens by giving them a limit. So kind of like an early justice system, really, in all A of very that. early justice system, great. yeah, yeah. And so with the eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, are we, are we basically saying that that is, was exactly what would happen? So, you know, you, you poke me in the eye, I get to poke you back. Is that how, is that how it would work? Or? Well, seemingly, that was the limit. That was as much as was recommended. If somebody poked you in the eye, the most you could do back right. was to poke them in the eye. Right. In actual fact, that rarely happened okay. in a legal sense. They did bring in a monetary system where you were fined for some of your crimes. Okay, so that's, that's really interesting, mm. isn't it? Because we might kind of see that as quite a modern thing, mm. that where we have a, a kind of a financial recompense. Um, but really interesting that we have this, because um, we, we obviously don't do, we don't have that in our justice system mm. now, that um, we have... A, you know, this eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, but there is some kind of recompense for mm. a crime that has been committed. Uh, but to say, kind of say that, that, that that's the maximum, mm. so, you know, I put you in the eye, you can't then go and lock my head off um, in, in retaliation, but there's a framework. So what's uh, kind of, that's really, that's really interesting in terms of the background of it, mm. um, but why then is Jesus kind of referring back to that? What's, what's he talking about in this passage for us? Yeah, it was a common expression, the people of that day will have all known what it was, mm. an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. It was found in Exodus. It was part of the law in the yeah. Torah. Yeah. So what Jesus was doing was updating it, okay. basically, and giving them extra knowledge. So they'd been given the bases of the law. Now it was time to move towards... Well, what does mercy look like? How do we move forward and improve our civilization even more? Yeah, absolutely. So as Jesus is kind of talking about this, he says, well, actually, this, this was the case, but now I'm giving you something new, something different, mm. uh, a new way of kind of working through all of this. Mm. Uh, and that whole thing about actually um, what Jesus kind of teaches in terms of mercy and grace and love and and it's really interesting that, that kind of that first bit about eye for an eye then moves into love for enemies which is feels like a very kind of a quite a big jump to kind of go well now i don't want you to treat people like you know in that mm. way and um, maybe even i mean it's really interesting is that it kind of goes into this whole thing about strike strike it you know off, strike if someone strikes you on the cheek you offer the other cheek um well that seems i suppose it seems a little bit crazy really in lots of ways to say well, you know, if I'm going to hit you, then 
uh, actually, I expect, or sorry, if you're going to hit me, then I'm going to let you do it again. Mm. Seems a bit backwards. So what do you think, kind of in terms, and the coat stuff, mm. there's some, and the second, walking a second mile uh, yeah. and stuff. What's, what's going on in all of that? Well, for the, for the audience of the day, again, they would have been very familiar with these instances in life. The hit with you, hit the right cheek. They would have been doing that, the ordinary people, or the, the leaders of the land, to some poor soul with the back of the hand. Mm. It would be a whack. And that person would most likely fall on the floor cowering mm. and be humiliated by yeah, it. Yeah, so the back of the hand is a real kind of humiliation it, thing, it isn't is. it? It's not a... Which anything. we see today yeah. in some instances. Whereas what Jesus was saying... Don't lie and cower, I imagine, but turn the other cheek so that he's, this person's got to, has the opportunity to hit you again, but not in such a humiliating way, uh, okay. in a much more, I wouldn't say equal way, but you're almost, the people would have been almost standing up for themselves sure. and saying, I'm not humiliated, I've got up, just hit me again, it's okay, I'm standing up to you. Which does seem so bizarre. But that, that whole thing of, of uh, is, I think we see it all through the Gospels, don't we, where mm. Jesus, Jesus is the great leveller, Jesus kind of raises up the lowly and brings down the mighty. You yes. know, we see that in, uh, you know, yeah. in, in kind of Mary's song as well, don't we? And that thing about being the leveller means that actually I, the, the, the back of the hand is such a dismissive swipe to say you are not worth anything. But to actually to do it the other way is is a it's more it's, it's equal. A bit, it is more equal. It's it more is equal. A bit to say, it's oh, more yeah, like a boxing match. match. Exactly. It's yeah. just like actually, I've yeah. got the you know, and I'm, it'd be really interesting to see if there's some sort of uh, interplay yeah. with that. And the thing with the the uh, uh, the coat and uh, your coat and your cloak, there's a whole thing with kind of um, again, it's to do you know, there's that whole thing about. Um, uh, equality mm. in there, isn't there? That actually you're not you're not allowed to leave somebody naked. Mm. So uh, you could take their shirt but not their coat, or their coat but not their shirt because you couldn't disrespect anyone. And actually, um, them say, saying actually almost giving themselves. So it's all, not quite the level of thing, but actually people offering themselves. Mm. And then again, the second mile. Oh, that what what an, what an old statement that is. Yeah. is go go the second mile. Yeah. Go the extra mile. Um, and then we move into this bit about loving, uh, loving your enemies. Mm. Um, now, there are hints of that in the Old Testament, mm. about loving enemies, or loving, loving neighbor, certainly in the, uh, in the Old Testament throughout Exodus and Leviticus, there's a really important thing about the alien among you and how you care for the alien. Mm. Um, uh, but is, is there anything in particular in, in this that you, kind of, that you find a challenge with the, the, the kind of love for enemies stuff? You know, it says, pray, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. Mm. I think if you're the person who's been doing the persecuting and that person forgives, it's a very powerful thing to be able to forgive somebody. It's quite, I would say it's very disarming. Mm. And sometimes they'll reject that love. And like in Les Mis, mm, Yeah. We like our music. We love Les Mis. <laughs> we, love, we really do love them. But Javert and Valjean, all the way through, Valjean was forgiving yeah. Javert. And he would, so much couldn't cope with that level of love and forgiveness that he threw himself off the yeah. bridge, didn't Spoilers, he? And, but yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that sense yeah. of, of not uh, of, uh, being so overwhelmed by love that he couldn't cope with it. Mm. But actually, Jesus is, is kind of saying, actually, we, we are called to overwhelm people with our, mm. with our love. Mm. And, that, the, and challenge and them. Absolutely. It's a challenge. And all of mm. this is kind of moving people forward. We were, talk, we were talking earlier, weren't we, about kind of Jesus saying, I'm going to move you from this place, move you on in grace and move you on in mercy and mm. actually move you on in love and justice mm. and all, all of that. Mm. Great. Because Thanks. you need to be Christ-like. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And it ends with that, isn't it? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly mm. Father is perfect.
Thank you, Shell. It's really helpful. And um, we're going to put some questions up for you to have um, a discussion around and maybe think about how some of these things play out of, or have played out in your own lives uh, and, and actually how, what does this mean for us today? So have some excellent and fun conversations. Thanks, Shirley. Thank you.